welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's occasional show where we show off the hottest stuff coming through PC Labs. I'm John Burek, this is Matt Buzzy, Hello. and we are here in PC Labs in New York, and we have here the 2022 version of a very familiar face, which is the Razer Blade 15 Advanced Edition. Mm -hmm. So Matt spent the last few days testing this um, very attractive and high-end gaming laptop, and he's going to take us through some of the features today. So take it away, Matt. Yes, as you said, a familiar design. We've seen this one quite a bit. There are some refinements this time, which is not always the case between the annual sort of iterations of this design, but uh, they're relatively minor. It is, by and large, the same sleek, um, you know, same isn't always, isn't always bad because uh, this is one of the best designs we see generally. It's a high quality metal build. The touchpad is one of the best we see on Windows laptops. Thin, feels good, feels like the money you pay for it, and it is very expensive. Um, even the starting model of this laptop is $2,500. So this is, to be clear at the front, High end, this is for enthusiasts, this is for people where budget and value are less of a primary concern. Um, you're going for obviously power, but also some portability. There are big gaming laptops that give you more power. We'll talk about the performance in a little bit. But this, by buying this, this implies you probably want to take it with you at least a little bit, use it on the road. Um, maybe it's just your everyday laptop that also plays games uh, once you get home. Got it. So this is um, the 15, uh, or the Blade 15. Now, over the last couple of years, we've seen an emergence of a couple of different uh, screen size mm -hmm. categories for uh, laptops in general and gaming laptops in particular. We're starting to see 14 inches. We're starting to see 16 inches, which are truly 14 and 16 inches. Mm -hmm. And then the 15 inch class, the traditional 15 inch class, is 15.6, mm -hmm. kind of close to the 16s. So with the screen here, as I understand it, this screen is 15.6, but it also has some new stuff happening there in terms of resolution and gaming appropriateness. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes, uh, there was there was a few years ago where uh, gaming laptops started putting QHD and even 4K resolutions um, into screens, and then we started to see a little bit less of that as high refresh rate monitors kicked in, um, and that eventually made its way to laptops, and now pretty much every gaming laptop has a high refresh display, but it's very difficult to do high refresh and uh, high resolution. So it took a while for those panels to kind of get into, into production, and now we have a QHD and 240 hertz uh, resolution display. There's also a 360 hertz full HD version and a 4K high refresh version. So between all the different Razer Blade 15 SKUs, uh, you can get kind of any combination that you want, whether you favor the resolution or if you favor the uh, the refresh rate. But this is a pretty good combination of the two. Um, this laptop, for reference, has an RTX 3070 uh, Ti in it, which is also new, and um, Intel's 12th generation Alder Lake uh, processor. It's a, Core i7-12800H chip. Um, so those are both high-end, the 3070 Ti and this chip. So only components like that could really power a QHD 240 hertz display. If you had less powerful components, you'd kind of be wasting the monitor, uh, the, the display. It wouldn't really be able to display frame rates that high. Um, the resolution would be too demanding for the parts. But we did find in testing, the, there is a point to having this display in this laptop. Right, yeah, because that was one of the things over the last couple of years, as we've seen RTX 3000 series GPUs and to much lesser extent Radeon 6000 series mm -hmm. um, GPUs come into machines, um, you're actually able to take advantage of very high refresh rate panels, whereas before, if you had a 1080p panel which went to 144 hertz, in a lot of games you could you could sort of take advantage of that, but when you're talking 240 hertz or 300, you know, 300 hertz panels, that's quite a, quite a, quite a jump there. Yeah. So with um, the 3070 Ti you have in here, this kind of I wouldn't say suffers, but um, is sort of governed by the same sort of variability in how much power it can consume, and it mm -hmm. depends on how many. Um, watts that the um, manufacturer has allocated as a maximum. So what's going on here with this one? As I as we've seen in a lot of previous gaming laptop reviews, the same GPU could be configured for a wide range of power consumption, which affects performance. So yes. what's going on here? Um, all the new Blade 15 are uh, 105 watts. Um, that's what Razer told me. So um, that is on the moderate to higher end, but there are some bigger 17-inch laptops especially that can really boost the wattage up further. Um, you obviously want to set a limit where the laptop can run and not overheat and be functional in the thin chassis like these. So Razer put that limit on it knowing that's kind of the sweet spot for the performance they want to get versus uh, keeping this design pretty thin and portable. And it largely worked. Um, it gets a little loud and it gets pretty hot, but not really anything outside the bounds of normal gaming laptop. Um, we have definitely heard louder even Blade 15s in the past, so I think the balance has gotten has gotten a bit better. Um, whether that's more efficiency of the processor and the GPU, you know, working together, um, whatever it is, it's a better sort of audio <laughs> situation. It does rev up kind of loud at its most strain, but the average fan noise and performance uh, was good. We saw 70 frames per second and or higher in the most demanding game we test, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, on the maximum settings um, at 1080p. 
Uh, so that's that's pretty good frame rates. It still hit 60 thereabouts uh, at QHD. So um, even in a game like that, there is a point to having both the high refresh screen and the uh, the high resolution. Um, games like uh, F1 2021 is another one we test. Um, hit 100 FPS with DLSS on or 90 uh, with, with DLSS off. So um, a very good performing laptop. Games like Rainbow Six Siege, where you really want the frame rate super high to take advantage of the high refresh screen uh, into the hundreds and two hundreds. So pretty much does what it's supposed to do. Obviously, you're paying a lot. This SKU is $3,000, so right. make of that what you will. Some of that price is for the components. There are laptops out there that have equivalent performing parts but aren't in such a thin chassis, so those might be less money for that power, whereas this is a little more money for that power because you're also getting uh, the thin design. Got it. So with a 3070 Ti, if you are um, like trying to compare this on the market without having seen test numbers, um, again, say a 3070 not TI or a 3080 not TI. Like, how did how did this perform if um, you have those sort of uh, you know numbers in your head, mm -hmm. like versus some other 3070 or 3080 not TI SKUs? Like, it's very hard to tell if these things could all be at different power levels. Yeah. Like, it's a sliding scale, mm -hmm. you know, within each category. Right. So you how, could you could have a 3070 TI that performs like a 3080, yep. or one that performs more like a 3070 based on the wattage. Um, at least at this 105 watt configuration, it kind of fell right in the hierarchy where you might expect it to between right. the two. Um, our our comparisons that we use for performance testing kind of made that kind of nice and neat <laughs> for, right. for our purposes. Like it uh, it performed slightly better than something we compared against the Alienware X15. Um, a little less expensive that model and. Um, but similar parts, and I believe that was a, that was a 3070. Right. It was mostly a better performer than that. There were occasional tests where the Alienware would take the lead, or vice versa. Mostly the Blade 15 um, and its newer processor were superior, but um, compared to the bigger laptops, like the Lenovo Legion 7, uh, that's a 16-inch machine, a little bigger, um, around the same price for the AMD model, and uh, that performed a little better. There was a little more thermal room. It had, I believe it had an RTX 3080, so that performance was clear, maybe 10 more frames per second on those demanding uh, types of games, so you can get a pretty clear sense of like, should I pay all in for the power and the frame rate and a little less portable of a laptop, or should I buy this laptop that has a little bit of both? Right. So the machines that would compete with this, you would say, be something like an Alienware X15. Mm -hmm. um, any others that come to mind that you would say are sort of in the same zone? I mean, obviously, yeah. the, the body is a different class than say like that Lenovo um, Legion you were mm -hmm. talking about, which is more plastic. Yeah, it's a little, yeah a little bigger, little little less premium, a uh, little less premium feel. Um, this whole thing, I, again, like the RGB keys, is all very razor. You know, we've seen this. We've seen this great touchpad. So you're paying for all that stuff, right? It's thin. The battery life was pretty good, about about five and a half hours. Not not mind blowing, but but solid. Um, if you do want to go more the portability route, uh, we really like the ASUS RG Zephyrus G14, the new 2022 model. That's right. probably the best pure portable laptop. A little less power. Still expensive. Again, we're talking in the range where these things are mostly all two thousand dollars. We have a whole separate recommendation list of cheaper laptops around a thousand dollars mid range. But if we're Purely comparing this for what it is, and they do keep making new versions of this every year and charging that much money. So people are buying them. I know a lot of you are like, I'm not paying $2,500 for a laptop, but people are buying them. Um, so that's the kind of thing we compare against other laptops that cost that much. That makes sense. Yeah, because I mean, if they have not really heavily refreshed this series for, you know, X number of generations mm -hmm. now, they're clearly doing something right, or at least the market thinks they're doing something right, mm -hmm. right? So actually, could you um, run through what is you know, clearly new on this versus the last generation. I know for two, just sort of a, at a glance, it looks very similar, mm -hmm. but there are some subtle changes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they added uh, 1080p webcam and the fingerprint, fingerprint resistant coating last time they updated the blade. So new this time, um, there is a nice new speaker grill that sort of is a little more modern. It blends in. It's kind of just perforations into this one sheet, which is what we see on most laptops, and we just think that looks better. The old style was kind of this grill that looked a little out of place. The power button also formerly was embedded into that. It is now right there dedicated on the keyboard um, into its own button, which is a little more satisfying uh, to hit. So it's minor things like that. Um, you know, it's not groundbreaking, but every new little addition, much like any of the laptops we like, like a MacBook that gets updated or the Dell XPS that gets updated, the small iterations that make it a little bit better since they put out an annual or even twice a year, uh, they update these laptops, so. So in terms of like, uh, um, I guess, um, portability and space, since there are so many more sort of clear classes of gaming laptop now at 14, 15, 
which is 15, 6, mm -hmm. 16, and 17. How does this weigh out, or in terms of portability for its class versus, I mean, 14 is obviously a lot smaller. Yeah. You know, you're talking an inch and a half less screen, but it's very close to 16, right? And once you're at 16, you're almost at 17. Yeah, yeah. So, like, how does this play out in terms of portability? Yeah, for some, for some people, the 16 might be worth it for that little extra screen real estate and power, but you might get above five pounds or around five pounds. This is 4.4 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, oh. it's, it's really not overly heavy. Part of that's also the metal, like it's it's a little a little heftier because of the metal build. Um, so the the 14 inch laptops might be closer to three, maybe a little over three. Um, so you really, it depends on the person how much you care, like is an extra pound in your bag gonna make that much of a difference? How much do you intend to take your laptop with you? But by and large, being around that weight, I think the I think the Alienware X15 weighs about the same amount off the top of my head, okay. um, is Kind of where you where you want the, a laptop like this. You don't want it to be too thin. There's diminishing returns. Thin looks good. I think there was a race to make everything right. thin, thin, make thin. But there's I think we've gotten to the point where it's actually like a little better to go the other way. You're not going to notice a millimeter or two more, and to a, to an engineer that makes a lot of difference on the components and the thermals. Right. Whereas to the end user, like being being slightly more thin isn't really worth all that much compared to the weight. I'd rather it go in that direction. Right. And, it's, and if you're talking about an ounce or two, when you factor in um, a machine like this, which Last five and a half, six hours, I think mm -hmm. you said on battery. You know, if you have to carry the power brick, any sort of deviation in the weight of the power brick is probably going to make up for, you know, deviations in right. the laptop itself. Right. You know, and if you want a game on the road, you have to take the power brick because any yeah. machine pretty much is going to, you know. Yeah, that five plus hour battery will turn into two or one. Right. At best. And, 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 <laughs> if you're playing games, you'll see dialed back performance too. Mm -hmm. So really, if you're going to game on the road, you're you're you've got the yeah. wire with you. Yeah. Um, anything new with the connectivity, or is the connectivity pretty much um, status quo? Pretty much the same. It's a proprietary charger. Um, there are uh, USB C with eight with um, Thunderbolt four support and a USB C without, and HDMI as well as standard USB A ports. So uh, it's a it's a good selection. Um, there's a terabyte of storage in this model also, um, and an SD card slot. So uh, it's kind of everything you need. Nothing really new. Nothing really to complain about or that's missing. So. Right. Yeah, so Thunderbolt 4 is taking the place of, I guess, like a uh, HDMI mini display port as mm -hmm. the uh, video out of choice mm -hmm. in the machine, in, in this kind of machine. There's one There's one HDMI. Oh, there's an HDMI. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So but you could also presumably do a, um, a USB display port over USB via the mm -hmm. Thunderbolt port. Right. So options, people like options, um, but yeah, I mean it's 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 sort of tried and true. We we know we're getting. Obviously, we we expect to have to pay a lot for this this type of design and performance, but um, it, you get what you pay for in that sense, at least. Right. Fair enough. Well, is there anything else that you uh, think we need to highlight on the Blade Fifteen this year? Or I I say this year, but we may well see another. <laughs> we may well see. Yeah, we say we we say you know there's the 2022 model for now. Sometimes we do like. Late 2021 was the last one we reviewed because the last couple months of the year they find a reason to redesign or rev it. Maybe they're a new processor launch. So we'll see what happens as 2022 progresses. But right. um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much that's pretty much the wrap up for this. Um, I think we hit on everything that that really is important. All right, so the Razer Blade 15 with um, new 12th generation Intel Alder Lake Mobile H series processor and a 3070 Ti in our test unit. Um, check out our full review on PCMag.com. Matt will have all the details, all the numbers, and his final score. And uh, thank you for watching. We will see you again soon. Mm -hmm.